So, we were looking at uh, the reactions, the ionization and dissociation reactions that are happening in the arc, right? How it actually controls the temperature distribution of an arc. Suppose now we, we are going to even further, you want to calculate the actual heat is generated in the arc, okay. So again, we need to know the electron density, the I in the arc, is not it? And the, the potential created by these reactions. Or in a word, if you know that the electrical resistivity, okay, resistance of an arc, we can also calculate the heat, is not it? Yeah, because R determines the resistance for the path of the energy carriers. So, obviously, more the resistance, they will collide with each other, high energy, high collision rate. So, it is possible from the fundamental physics to calculate an electrical resistance of an arc. It is very simple. So, once you know that, we can calculate obviously the heat and then we can balance it with conduction, convection and radiation. Okay, I am going to show you very simple derivation, okay, how we can conduct the electrical conductivity of an arc. So, if you say the current in an arc, okay, so what is current? Is the transport of the, the charge carriers. So, what are the charge carriers we have in the arc? Electrons and ions. The electrons they travel from cathode to anode. Ions? Anode to cathode. Okay. So, the total electric current is nothing but what is that? the electron current plus ion current, that is it, very simple right. So, the total current, if you say that, that is the current of electron plus current of ion. And if you calculate the current of the electric current and ion current, and we can make use of that to calculate, so what is the resistance for this current, is not it? So, if you know the, the length, area and the mass, okay, so we can calculate the conductivity or resistivity. So, first look at the electron current. So, electron current nothing but the amount of electrons travels from cathode to anode. This is nothing but the current density, the density of electrons number density. The electron current is defined through unit area, right? Amperes per square meter. It is nothing but, current means it's, it is travelling, is not it? So, velocity, okay? So, you have uh, N e of electrons, number of electrons, the number density, they carry a charge, is not it? electron charge E, the basic charge of an electron times the velocity, that is what current is, right? So, this is the drift velocity, so that is the average drift velocity. So, current is nothing but how much electrons you have times how fast they travel is not it? And during this process, they each electron carry their charge of E. So, the, the charge is transported okay, by the so and so number of electrons in a given velocity, right? It is clear? So, if you say the electron current J E is nothing but the elemental charge of an electron, how do you calculate the elemental charge of an electron? very famous experiment, yes, yeah, oil experiment, what, yeah, so Millikan's oil drop experiment, okay, plus 2 physics, is not it? So, this equation is also plus 2 equation, okay. So, the elemental charge of an electron times the number of electrons you have, number density 
times the velocity of the drift velocity of an electron would give you the current density current density is not it. So, now how do we calculate each term n e we know we can get e millikens oil drop experiment ok and then drift velocity. So, drift velocity is including the collisions ok electrons collide and then they drift and then they go they do not go in a free path. So, if it is free electron path then it is the average thermal velocity. So, in this case it is not the case ok resistance is created by the drift by the collision. So, it is not the thermal velocity it is the drift velocity because that determines the electron travel. If you have uh, high hindrance for the electron path obviously, you also reduce the drift velocity significantly right is not it. If a mean free path is longer the drift velocity will be higher is not it because then you have less collisions right. So, we can get the drift velocity calculated very simple equation. So, drift velocity u e is nothing but the acceleration times the time between two collisions ok. So, acceleration is defined by meter by second square is not it times second will give you velocity is not it. So, when you have acceleration multiplied by times you get drift velocity and what is this time here the time between two collisions is not it. So, we are having meter per second. So, we have acceleration time second because this is a drift velocity that means that after two collisions velocity changes right that velocity determined by how uh, for, uh, how high is acceleration is not it and acceleration how do you calculate acceleration is not it what is f here yeah it is electric field ok what is m here a here acceleration of electrons ok. So, now from this equation a is nothing but by m e but m e is for 1 but you also have a charge associated with that ok. So, you multiply it by sorry here right because the, the electric field is governed by the charge of an electron as well right is clear. So, so this is the force applied to accelerate a mass m e and if the force is e times e the acceleration is given by the force by mass is not it simple right. So, you substitute acceleration in this equation what will happen here now the we have an equation for the drift velocity which is nothing but coming from this equation is not it the force the electric field which determines the drift ok the acceleration of the electrons the how much field you apply between the, the cathode and anode is not it ok that will determine the acceleration ok how fast the electrons travel from cathode and anode determined by the, the, the field the, the, the potential difference you apply ok. So, then T e is the time between collision that will determine your drift velocity again how do you calculate the time between two collisions it is very simple ok the average mean path over thermal velocity ok. So, again so this is 
meter by meter second and this becomes second. It's clear. So we can substitute T A also from these equations. Why do we substitute? Because it is very difficult to calculate the collision between two time between two collisions. But we know the what will be mean free path at a given temperature of an electron. So what will be the average thermal velocity that can be calculated okay, for an electron. So we substitute that we get the drift velocity as a function of the up applied electric field and then mean free path mass thermal velocity. Okay. So again the Boltzmann from the Maxwell Boltzmann equation the average thermal velocity is given by square root of 8 kT by m e pi. Okay, so any particles. Okay, so, so we know the equation for the, the average thermal velocity. So now we can apply to the average drift velocity. So is average drift velocity is nothing but here. Okay. So this is coming from acceleration, isn't it? And then L e is mean free path. And then what is this? Thermal velocity. Okay. So if you use that, apply that, and then U e becomes. So V e is nothing but square root of 8 kT by, isn't it? Here. So M e is here. M e times by M e pi. And here we have L e. Is not it? So what will happen here now? U e. So the bar on top of the velocity is extremely important. Okay. This will become y pi. Is not it? Because m e goes inside, m e square, m e in denominator cancels out. Right, it's clear. And we now have the equation for drift velocity. And now the electron density, current density is nothing but the first equations E, number density, and then drift velocity. So if you replace E with this term, then we have the electron current density. Isn't it? It's nothing but so e over here and e here becomes e square, and then the the field you apply number density mean free path by square root of eight m e the mass of the electron Boltzmann temperature and pi. Yes, it's clear. So in these equations, the electron density is determined by two important variables here. What are the variables here, which are all uh, the, the constant, and what are the variables here? Hmm? The electric field, temperature. Okay, the other all, all, for example, this is constant. Okay, this is determined number density. So now the electron density, current density, is determined by the field and the temperatures. So obviously, if temperature is higher, so you you create more resistance because the collision number of collision incidents increases, the drift velocity decreases, isn't it? When you apply higher electric field, what will happen then? Okay, the current dense, current can flow much faster. The drift velocity increases. That's the relationship. 